Welcome back to Rona Garage guys. Today we are going to be working on another power wheel. I know you guys seem to like the last couple power wheel videos we did. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, this one we're actually going to go ahead and make this one. It is a Walmart brand um, Realtree uh, Dodge pickup truck that we're just going to go ahead and make this thing fully controllable by a remote. Comes with your motor controller, your wireless remote, and a full harness that goes through the entire truck and allows you to control it via remote control instead of just uh, your standard way. This one did come with the remote, like I said, uh, but it is second hand, so we do not have that remote. This will work for pretty much any power wheel that never came with the remote. This setup will work for any power wheel that never came with the remote. And if you're wanting to remote control it for somebody that's a little bit younger, um, does not know how to drive it themselves. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in on this. I've already taken the seat off. Um, it's just got a standard lock and then there's a cover with uh, two screws on it, maybe. And then up top here, you can actually take this windshield off. It's just plastic, couple clips that hold it in, um, in the corners and across the front. And then the hood is secured with four screws right across the top there. So that just kind of gave us access to everything. Um, pretty simple to take off, no big deal there. We will go ahead and strip out all the wiring harness here. It did have a controller in it, this one right here. Um, we are not going to use that controller at all. Like I said, we're going to upgrade to this wheelie controller. Like I said, I'll link this in the bottom of the video so you guys can find this kit here. And uh, so we're just going to go ahead and I'll strip all this harness out real quick and then we'll show you guys what we're doing. All right, now with all that factory harness ripped out of there, we can kind of see what we got going on. Um, these are just a power and a ground to your headlights. And then um, that's your speaker wire off the back of the radio on this. Uh, we did take out the forward and reverse switch. This one does have a different option here. Uh, so we actually have a high and a low speed as well as our forward and reverse switch. I'm not a huge fan of this giant lever on there. So we will put this forward reverse switch back in and uh, we're actually going to reuse the foot pedals uh, you know these are just switches here uh, that we don't need those because the trucks already got that in there same with the power switch we'll just reuse the one that's in the truck we might leave that one in there not entirely sure yet but with this module laid out here you can see we've got all of these wires sorry all of these wires here run up to the front of the truck and these br this brown and blue wire, that's gonna go to your steer motor. Uh, the rest of the stuff goes up to your forward reverse switch, your powers and your grounds for your headlights, uh, your power switch, high, low speed, and your pedals. These other two big connectors back here are gonna go to your drive motors, and they'll plug in right back here. And then this is just a circuit breaker That'll get your positive for the battery and the negative off of your charging port is also going to go to the battery. Now this one, it has, this is your connector for your charging port in the side of the truck here. So what we're probably going to go ahead and do is just wire this charging port into this connector, reusing the connector that came off of the truck. So all I've done here is I just went ahead and took this harness off of this module and I'm going to flip the truck around and actually route this. So with this harness routed through here you can kind of now see what, what we got going on. These two brown wires they go to your pedal switch which I just disconnected this one's just a simple uh, two position switch we're just going to plug these two wires in on our pedal and it should not matter which way these go they're just completing a circuit between that switch 
And then I also pulled this connector through here. This connector goes to our steer motor. Um, so we've got one or two different options here. We can either take the steer motor apart and get access to these two wires, or we can cut them and butt splice them, which is probably the route that we're gonna go. Um, this connector actually looks like it can be pulled back through onto the other side, so that's what we'll do. It'll give us a little bit more room to work, and we'll wire those up on the other side. We did here, so we just went ahead and cut these two wires that go to the steer motor to get that connector off there, as this is obviously a different style connector. It does have both ends here, so what we're going to do is actually go ahead and cut these and solder them on there. Now, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to get this set up correctly. Uh, without a wiring diagram for this, we truly have no way to know which color orientation is going to mean left or right. So once we get this thing all hooked up and running, if it steers the opposite direction, these two wires in this connector, you can actually de-pin them and flip them, or you can flip the two around. So we'll come back to that. I'm going to go ahead and hook them up now, just green to black, yellow to red. And if it's wrong, I'll show you guys how to de-pin this and reconnect it. And if it's right, you guys know for future reference. Now these red and black wires that we just hooked up, these are accessory, these are like accessory powers. So these are all gonna come on with uh, the key switch. So I've got one set that goes up here. Um, actually, that looks like it's missing the other wire in it. Yep, come out of the connector there. So we've got one set that's gonna go up to the radio here and the other two sets, we're gonna go to the headlights. Uh, you guys may have other lights on your power wheels. That's what all of these will power up here. Um, if you don't have the same connectors, you can use the same method we use there where you cut them and butt splice them. Um, looks like it gives you an additional, two additional powers there. Uh, we're not gonna need all of those, so we're just gonna leave the rest underneath here. Now, here's our high and low speed switch. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this behind the dash on high speed, because um, he really doesn't need to adjust it. You can adjust that with the remote. Um, I don't know of any kid that's gonna wanna turn it down and make it go slower, but your remote actually has uh, speed settings on it, so that S button there will adjust your speed setting uh, for the parental controls. So we'll leave that back there, and then we're gonna get into our forward and reverse switch. Like I said, we're gonna reuse the factory forward and reverse switch, so I am just gonna simply hook this up the same way this is, and plug it back in behind the dash. Okay, so we have actually run into a situation here where my wires are pretty tight up here and they're not allowing me to reach all the way up here. So this is from the old harness here. I'm just gonna plug this back into the lights and then I am going to connect them to power and ground from one of these, which this one will work perfect because it's already cut there.
So now we should have everything hooked up up here. We've got our powers spliced off into this harness here that's gonna run the headlights because it wasn't long enough. We've got our power to our steer motor here. And we have got our high speed switch just tucked away in there. Power back to our radio. Um, these orange wires go to the speaker that was left in the truck. We've got our harness ran back and plugged back into our forward and reverse switch. And we also hooked up our powers to our power switch as well. So everything up front here should be done. We also hit the pedal switch while we were underneath there. So we're gonna come back here in this area now and get back to work over here. So now back here, all we have left is to hook up our motors, plug our connectors in from up front there. Again, this one is gonna be your steer motor. This runs all of the other controls that you had. These two connectors here, sorry. These two connectors here are gonna run your motors, so we can go ahead and plug those in. And again, with no wiring diagram, these could be wired backwards, so when you go to forward, it actually goes in reverse. So we will need to verify that. Again, it's just as simple as switching the pins around in the connector. Um, or if you don't feel comfortable doing that, cutting and reconnecting the water, wires in a different order. The only other thing we have left here is the charger port. Like I said, I want to maintain that factory charger port. So I went ahead and cut the connector off of the original harness that was in the truck. So that plugged in over here. So we're just going to go ahead and disconnect these wires now and go ahead and wire those back in. Um, your black is going to be your ground. So we'll wire that in to the black on this side, take the red to the red, and then this um, brownish, tannish color should be like an interrupt. So when you're plugging in the charger, it won't let you turn this on. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut these wires off, wire them up real quick. Okay, so I did go ahead and get the entire harness set back up and did test it. The battery that's in it is completely dead because my son kept coming out and turning the power on to listen to the radio on it. So I'm using an additional battery that I had from a power wheel before we did a M18 swap. So if you see that, just kind of ignore that for right now. Um, I did test it though, and our steer motor wires are backwards. So we're gonna go ahead and flip these around uh, and get that taken care of real quick. So our forward and reverse do work now. Um, as you can see, if we turn the wheel to the right, it turns to the right, left to the left. Here's your speed adjustments here uh, with this S button. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing buttoned back together, kind of tidy up the wires underneath there, and uh, I'll show you guys it driving around real quick.
So for demonstrational purposes here, like I said, I've got that battery hooked up there and I'm gonna leave this cover off. But as you can see, this fires up. If you hit the gas pedal, we're in reverse. We go backwards, forward, goes forward. Now this is very hard to do here with one hand, but we can reverse, forward, steer left, and steer right. And you can see the headlights are on. So those are wired up properly. Our final test here is to make sure that the charger port works. The truck is powered on right now. We plug a charger in and it does shut off. So it, should, it looks like everything is functioning as it's supposed to on this truck. And this thing is ready to go. So there you guys have it. Uh, if you ever wanna go ahead and make a power wheel remote controlled, this is how you do it right here. Pretty simple swap uh, to do that. Probably took me maybe about 45 minutes or so. Um, and that's with pausing and then taking breaks to record and everything. It's a great upgrade to do if you have an older kid that has a power wheel and you want to put your younger one in it. They don't know how to drive it. That works perfect for that. You can control it. Um, works great for this situation here where it was a secondhand power wheel and we didn't have the controller for it. So it was about a $40 kit. Like I said, I'll, I'll leave a link below. You guys can check that out on Amazon. Came with everything there. The only thing you needed were two uh, AAA batteries for the remote. So if you guys like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.